Barlo Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you guessed it, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you my last, my final DIY, Dollar Tree DIY using these plaques that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Now this is a DIY that I have been building up to and although I'm not showing it here, I am incorporating three of these plaques. I am incorporating the snowman, Santa Claus, and the Christmas tree and some of the smaller wood packed, uh, I guess, ornaments that came in a five pack as well. This, hands down, without a doubt, is my number one favorite Christmas DIY, Dollar Tree Christmas DIY this year. Actually, it's just my favorite Christmas DIY I think that I've made in a while because I love the outcome of it. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you this final DIY that I'm doing today using these wood plaques that you can get from the Dollar Tree. You are not gonna wanna miss this one. I'm gonna start this DIY off by taking some of Apple Barrel's basic matte white acrylic paint, and I'm gonna give these wood DIY snowflakes that the Dollar Tree is carrying. These came in a five pack, great buy. I'm gonna give these a couple coats of this paint. Now, before the second coat dries, I'm gonna take this opalescent glitter. This is one that I got at Walmart. Dollar Tree has a great selection of glitter as well, and I'm gonna sprinkle it on these snowflakes while the paint is dry because it's gonna save me a step of having to add Mod Podge then doing it. If you do it while the paint is wet, the glitter will adhere just fine. Next up, I'll be doing the wood tree plaque. Now for this, I'm gonna start off by just painting the edges of this tree with a black acrylic paint. And I'm doing this because the black is going to coordinate with the fabric that I'm using. Once the edges are dry, this is something I've done before. I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on the front of this. I'll be using this black gingham fabric that I've been using all Christmas for my Christmas DIYs. I'm gonna cover this tree, the front side, with the black gingham. Once I've got the fabric on, I'm gonna place a second coat of Mod Podge over the top of this, pop it in my oven to get it good and dry. Once it's good and dry, I'm gonna cut off that excess fabric with a razor. Now for the trunk of the tree, I'm gonna paint right over the fabric with a black acrylic paint. For this DIY, I really wanted to go the non-traditional route because this year I really wanted to incorporate this farmhouse black gingham or buffalo check into my Christmas decor and I thought that this was the perfect way to do that. I think it's a fun way to do that. And you guessed it, I will be using a white puppy paint to add snow to the tips of this tree. Moving on to the wood Santa plaque, this is very similar to the one that I did at the beginning of this Christmas season. Actually, I think it was my first Christmas DIY. I'm gonna add some Mod Podge just to the top of his hat, not to the pom-pom or the elevated brim part because I'm just gonna be adding fabric to this section. And again, if this seems repetitive, that's because it is. I'm gonna take a straight edge razor. I'm gonna cut off the excess fabric, leaving fabric only on the top of his hat. Then I'm gonna take some black puffy paint and on the elevated brim part of his hat, I'm gonna use this with the puffy paint just to give it some texture, kind of give it that black furry look. And I'm gonna do the pom pom as well. For Santa's face, I figured the perfect color was this sun-kissed peach by Apple Barrel. So I'm gonna fill in the skin parts of his face with this. Santa needs a mouth, so I'm gonna go in with a pencil and draw it in. I'm using a pencil, so if I need to erase it, I can. Then using a mixture of a red and white acrylic paint because I still have not bought any pink, I'm gonna fill in his mouth with this. Again, using some white puffy paint, I'm gonna fill in his mustache and his beard with the puffy paint. 
For Santa's eyes, I'm just gonna go with kind of a half rounded triangle, if that makes any sense. For me, when I relate things to shapes, it makes it for some reason less complex. I, I honestly, I don't know why, it's probably just my silly thinking, but it really does help. I feel like it takes the pressure off of doing something because who can't do a triangle with rounded points? Once I've got his eyes all dried out, again, I'm gonna go in with the puffy paint, but I'm gonna use a combination of the puffy paint and a paintbrush because this is a smaller area and I don't wanna risk the puffy paint splattering when you squeeze the bottle. And for some of these thinner areas of the eye, it's easier just to go in with a brush to fill them in. Oh my word, he's so stinking cute already, but he's missing rosy cheeks. So for his cheeks, I'll be using these oil pastels by Artist Loft. This is a 48 piece set that you can get at Michael's for $5. These are great to have on hand because when doing stuff like rosy cheeks, it's so easy to achieve a soft clouded look. And so to do this, I will be using kind of a stiffer brush and I'm gonna use the red and pink oil pastel. Kind of use a combination of both just to get the color that I want and see how it's going. You see the look? There's a bit of a different look that I get using these oil pastels versus using a paint, and I'm sure it's all in technique, but this is my way of achieving the look that I needed to achieve. Next up is our last plaque, which is the snowman plaque, and I will basically be doing it the same way. This is a plaque that I've done two other times this Christmas, and I really love these wood plaques. When I saw them out at the Dollar Tree, I snatched up as many as I could because they are such fun, easy pieces to work with that you can really make stinking cute. And so for him, I'm gonna add fabric to the top part of his hat, just like I did with Santa and his scarf doing it the same way with the Mod Podge, the fabric, then the Mod Podge again. Once he's out of the oven and he's good and dry, you guessed it, I'm gonna cut off the excess fabric. Then I'm gonna go in with some white puppy paint. I'm gonna fill this snowman in because there is a lot of him to fill in. And I can't forget his nose, so I'm gonna give that a bit of orange puppy paint as well. For his eyes and his mouth, I just do the basic face. There are several different versions of this that you can do, but this really is another really easy way to make a cute snowman face. Once his nose is dry, I'm gonna go in with some white paint and just add some lines, kinda give that carrot a bit of dimension so it's not just a flat looking carrot. And I'm gonna finish him off with some rosy cheeks. At the top of each of the plaques, there was a hole that got covered when I placed the fabric. So using a razor, I'm just gonna poke through the fabric and I'm gonna do that on all three of the plaques, the snowman, Santa, and the tree. Pretty much after I had finished this project, I realized that the back didn't look finished. It kinda looked messy. And so I did go in with some black acrylic paint and just kind of finished off the back of each of the plaques so it had a nice finished look. I gotta tell you, I am really stinking excited that I'm finally doing a DIY where I get to use Dollar Tree's wired jute cord. I'm gonna wrap this cord around a pencil, kind of giving it that coiled look, and I'm gonna do it about this size here on my pencil, and I'm gonna do three of them this size. Then I'm gonna feed it through the hole at the top of the plaques, flip it over, and hot glue it to the back just to keep it in place. And yes, I know I just showed you that the back of these were painted, but like I said, it was an afterthought at the end of the DIY, and I had to insert it somewhere in the video, so I figured I'd insert it where I did. I'm gonna do this to all three of the plaques, the Santa, the snowman, and the tree. Now to put all these pieces together to make a beautiful DIY, you are going to need a piece of this wood. This is one that you can get at Lowe's, an eight foot piece you can get for under $2. And this is one and three quarter inches by three quarter inches. And I had them cut it down to 24 inches for me. Using a hammer, I'm gonna distress this wood just by hammering it in a bunch of different spots. So it comes out looking like this. 
Once I've completely hammered and distressed it to my liking, I am going to take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of run over it to get rid of all of the splinters. I'm going to give this a good couple coats of paint using Waverly's chalk paint in the color of hazelnut. Once that base coat is dry, I'm going to go in with Waverly's Ivory and a dry brush and kind of give this a dry brush stroke. Kind of give it that frosty, aged, distressed, crackled look without using a crackle medium. Now all that's left to do is to put our pieces together and see the finished project. I'm going to start off by hot gluing the tree to the center of the wood. If you start off with the center, you can evenly space the other two plaques really without having to measure them. So that's why I'm starting off with the tree in the center and I'm gonna put the snowman and Santa off to each side of the tree. In between each of these larger plaques, I decided to add the snowflakes and I did them a bit shorter so there was a bit of a length difference. For the top of this to hang it, I just added a piece of the wired jute cord to the top and hot glued it to the back on each side. And there you have it. I gotta tell you, I am so stinking excited at the outcome of this DIY, bringing three of these plaques together, incorporating the ornaments, and really this wasn't a very pricey DIY at all. I feel like this is such a budget-friendly piece, and if you were to find a piece like this at Kirkland's Hobby Lobby, it would cost so much more to buy it than it did to make it. And the best part of this is that you can DIY this to suit your decor needs. This is such a versatile piece that could be done to suit any decor style. I love it, I love it, and it is one of my favorites. I am excited to put it up every year, and it is most definitely one of those pieces that I will be keeping for years to come and handing down to my kids. I love making these pieces because when I make these, it reminds me of all of the pieces that I incorporate into my holidays, whether it be Easter or Thanksgiving or Christmas, the pieces that my mom made and gave to me and she had actually signed them. And they're pieces that I have now that I cherish. And these are pieces that someday when I'm no longer that I'm hoping my kids will incorporate into their home decor during the holiday seasons. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs ups and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day, happy crafting on a budget, and bye for now everybody.